Hello everyone, uh, it is so good to be with you again uh, today and we started last week uh, with a two-week series of provision in vision and we're going to carry on with this and I hope and I'm truly trusting that you were stirred in what God was sharing with you uh, in this week and pondering on God's word. Well, I was definitely. And just to quickly just recap a couple of things that we mentioned last week. Uh, it was the whole concept of seeing and experiencing God's vision, God's prophetic uh, voice into your life. We spoke on uh, Proverbs 29, 18, without vision we perish. We looked at a bit of, about Abraham's life and how God nudged him and shared vision with him uh, in his journey. And it went uh, about seeing and then believing what you are seeing and then the confession on that and how God changed uh, Abraham's confession and Sarah's confession on what they were believing and what the promises of God uh, said over their life. So um, let's get into that. Today um, I want to focus on the provide part, uh, which is really interesting. I think this really gripped me and this was the challenge for me really to see what is God saying with the concept of vision and vision for, for my life and our life and this household, Doxa Day Community Church as well. And I want to take us back to the word that we, we were heard last week about the word hasa um, and the meaning of it. And it is to see, to look, prophesy, behold, and provide. Seeing as a seer, divine communication. And that thing, the word provide, just stood out for me really largely. And I'm thinking, okay, so what... What God is giving us and what He's sharing with us and what we are seeing um, is actually also the provision, which really almost shook me. So that which I see is the provision. There is provision in the vision. Um, it's not always um, thinking there's provision for the vision, but there's provision in the vision, which actually shifts a little bit. It actually makes you think about vision and that which God has deposited into your life a bit differently. Um, and I, I think this is a way that God actually wants to provide for us because it's the same word. The prophetic vision and provide is the same thing. It, it means that. Um, and if I'm looking, you know, sometimes we want to uh, we sometimes are hoping for resources for the vision. We are hoping that something happens before we actually get into that which God is saying. And we're going to work through this. I'm just thinking of Abraham. I think sometimes when we think we're waiting for provision for the vision, we almost become impatient. And this, is this thing of, this is not happening, this is not happening. I'm thinking of Abraham and Sarah. You know, they made things happen differently. And Ishmael came and, um, you know, God's saying, okay, just stop there. Just, just stop. I want to remind you what I said about you. I want to remind you that it will come out of your lineage and Sarah's lineage. Um, you know, and, and God reminded them because, and I think it was so beautiful, even in our mistakes, uh, in our impatience, God doesn't allow that to defer from the future that he has for us. You know, God redeemed that. God blessed, God blessed Ishmael um, uh, further on. And I think that's just so beautiful because to realize um, me missing the mark, uh, me sinning, missing the mark, um, doesn't necessarily direct my life. I can decide if it is going to direct my life or not. Um, but I can also decide, okay, God's done something new in me. I'm a new creation. Um, I've been forgiven. I'm righteous. What am I going to work with? What, am I going to work with my mistakes that they direct my life? Or am I going to go back where God nudges me and says, come, let me go and show you the stars. Let me go and show you the sand. You know, if I think how God worked with Abraham, I think it's so beautiful. Um, but then I want to mention this is before you experience, well, maybe not before, but there's something about this. Before you experience a provision, physical provision, physical provision, God causes you to see prophetically. And I'm thinking, imagine if God had to give us the provision and say, yeah, you have the provision, you stand there and say, what must I do with this? 
you know, what must I do with this provision? And I think that's just so beautiful to realize. There's something about it, and that's why I really want to encourage you. This is for all. What have you been hearing and seeing? What has God prompted you that he has mentioned to you? Or maybe you just decided, oh, I just, just keep this away from me. You know, God, I don't want to hear what you've got to say. Um, but what is it? Uh, because he, he, God's just not going to drop stuff there for you, and you don't know what to do with it. And I think that is so important to, to realize that. You know, God wants you to see that you are provided for. I'm thinking, Hassa, prophetic seeing and vision. He wants you to see that you are provided for. He gives you vision and for purpose so that he can provide for you. I think that's just actually so awesome. So I'm going to ask you, what is stirring in your heart? What does your heart break for? I mean, God has put natural stuff in you to allow you to, to experience things. I'm thinking, you know, is healing something that stirs you? Is the medical, I'm thinking healing, medical, physiotherapy, he, does that stir you? Does business stir you? Are you a businessman? Do you want to bring for what stirs you for God's kingdom? Understand? Because this vision, remember it's a spiritual activity, I said. So it's always going to involve God's kingdom. That, that is what we do. That's what we do with our lives. You know, is it education? Is it, is it equipping people? Is it training people? Is that what stirs your heart? What it brings forth your passion and your compassion? Is it nurturing? Is it talking? Is it being a voice for others? You know, is it bringing order? What is that that, 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 that God is placed in you to realize that that is the provision that God gives? That is that ability of yours is your provision it's not outside of the vision and I think what I think what's really important to to um, to realize is that God needs a body to operate in earth he needs a body I have to think of uh, John 1 that we know so well God in us us in him Holy Spirit in us Jesus in us and then we are the temple of the Holy Spirit I mean, golly, we don't, we must understand that God needs a body. Um, there's something about where there's a joint agreement with me and God when I'm hearing and seeing and keeping this vision in front of me. I, it's that, that almost waiting that God's saying, come on, give me access. Give me access to this. God is not going to push you and force you to believe this. He, he isn't a God like that. <laughs> Sorry, he doesn't. He doesn't want to control you because it's a love relationship between you and him. He won't force you to believe. But you know what? God needs a body to share his hasa, his vision. God needs a body to share his provision, his hasa. He needs a body to function. And I think, yes, you know, it's me and you, God. We're going to do this thing. It's me and you that are going to allow this thing to come forth in my life and to impact your kingdom. You see, so there's this part where we, where we heard last week about the whole thing of believing, you know. It's, and that's where I want to challenge you. Have you left your vision up there and not allow it to impact your actual physical body? Or you're leaving out there, you're saying you're leaving at a distance and no, 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 Lord, uh, I just want to live. Let me just live. Or you're saying, no, God, you've placed me here for this incredible Credible part of your kingdom to impart. You see, because we are called believers. I just love this. We are called believers, um, or, or we called doubters. I'm thinking of the, of the scripture that I said last week. It says, um, I believe, therefore I speak. So the opposite of that is, I doubt, therefore I keep quiet. Because we learned the last word was confession. So if I'm a believer, what am I doing? I am speaking. If I doubt, I don't talk. And that's our challenge. Are we talking? Are we saying, God needs a body? Yes, Lord. I believe I am the right body, the right human, the right person for this vision on earth. I want to say that out. I am the right person for what you have destined and abilities and the resource that you've actually placed in me, my thought capacity, my brain capacity, which is in you, my heart capacity. Um, Listen to what Smith Wigglesworth says. I just love this quote. It says, I am not moved by what I see or moved by what I feel, but I'm moved 
by what I believe. Love it. Move is an action. This is what I'm saying. This, this is what we should say. Move. Um, we are moved by what we believe. So there's an action that takes place because I've behold it. I've, conf I've believed. I confess. Now something has to happen. There has to be movement with what I believe. I can't just think and think, this is just going to land here. It's just going to happen. It's not going to happen. Movement has to take place with what you believe. I'm thinking, when God spoke to Abram the first time, so I'm going to make, uh, your, your, your generation is going to live here. We're reading in Genesis 12. He says, Abram actually moved. He, shift, he physically shifted. I'm thinking of Joseph. Joseph has this dream and immediately, I mean, whether that was wise or not, it doesn't matter. What did he do? He moved. He spoke. What happened? He, he moved into a pit. Then he moved into a jail. Then he moved into the courts. Then he moved into the jail. There was constant this movement of him for what God had purposed and envisioned for his future. I'm thinking Esther. <gasps> Esther moves. First, she doesn't eat for a couple of days. <laughs> she fasts. Fasts. And then what happens then? Then she goes into the king's courts. She moved. She shifted. Yeah, she has this. She believes this. She starts confessing this. And what happens? Then she moves. It takes that, there's that, that risk moment that you have to take by faith. Um, I'm looking at Moses, the deliverer. He sees this burning bush. What does he do? He starts walking to Egypt. He stands in front of the Red Sea. What does he do? God says, lift up. What God needs a body for him to work on earth so that your future can actually happen according to what he was saying. Oh, I just love Saul of Tarsus, which we know as Paul. I just love this. Um, where uh, Saul of Tarsus was, he uh, really wanted to destroy any people of the way, people who are believing uh, that Christ is the Messiah. They call themselves the way. I mean, he went out of his way to murder them, to put them into jail. And on his way to Damascus, uh, Jesus encounters him with a light and actually speaks to him and speaks to Saul and says, you need to go to Damascus. I'm going to send you a guy. His name is going to be Ananias. And he's going to speak to and tell you what you are going to do. And so for three days, uh, Saul is blinded, he cannot, he, he, he cannot see, and he actually didn't eat. And then God speaks to Ananias and says, Ananias, I want you to go and meet Saul. And he's saying, God, do I seriously need to go and meet Saul? And what happens is he says, I want you to heal him and bring forth his sight. Oh, I just love this. You know, where Paul was blinded to what God wanted his life actually to become. And what happens? He gives him back his sight. But listen, um, this, this happens in Acts 9. And then we read about again where Paul actually relates um, uh, how he experiences in Acts 22. And listen to what he says. And Ananias said to him, the God of our fathers. This is Ananias now speaking once he's healed um, uh, a soul. He says, the God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will. Oh, what we learned last week. The thoughts of God. Know his will. And to see the righteous one. And to hear his voice. And now, now he says, and now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, wash your sins, call on his name, and go. And Saul actually does that. Now we know him as Paul. And I'm thinking, Look what happens. He says that you may know him, that you may see, and that you may hear. And immediately, what happens with that belief? I mean, it's, it's fascinating. He actually goes. He actually does something with what he had experienced from God, what he had seen, and his eye, his sight has been renewed. So this whole thing of moving into your vision is something that you need to respond to. God doesn't force you there, but he needs you to have this agreement with him and you that this is what you are pursuing. I'm thinking Abraham didn't wait at his father's house for his son to be born. No, he responded to that 
which the hasa, which you receive, the hasa word, the vision of prophetically seeing and which is provided for you. You know, that your ability and resources are available you, available for you for when you for which you were born to do. Your ability and resources is all there for you, but you need to step into it. Um, this one person I was reading up, just researching, you, you know, this topic, his name is Isaac. He says, yet your provision is usually hidden until you act on your vision. <laughs> That's quite profound. Um, and, you know, I just want to share a story with you which happened in December. This whole thing of, you know, God needs a body. And I need to, I to move. Have I heard? Yes, I've heard. It was about our sons um, and just their, their education. And we were trusting God. We knew God had spoken. But we shelved stuff. Literally, we shelved stuff. Because we felt we don't have the provision. We don't. So we shelved what God was saying for our kids. And um, last year, um, God actually used one of our kids to stir what he was saying over our lives. And we're saying, we just can't do this. And um, and we actually decided, you know what? Let's just respond to what God is saying. Let's actually physically respond. So we did physically respond. We called, we found out, we did, we studied, we did everything. We, we responded to that sight that we saw. You know what? The provision didn't come beforehand. <laughs> it was faith. We had to step up in faith into this vision that what God was saying over our boys. It hit me afterwards so much. That, oh God, how blinded could I be to thinking you are going to provide beforehand? Beforehand. You know, there was this faith moment of us. And you know what? When we stepped into that, when we took the first move of what I believe, the provision started coming. And it, it, it gripped my heart. You see, when I take the first step of faith, um, it will always even enlarge that which you've seen. Remember what we said is, God doesn't see less for me. He always sees more for me. He always sees more for you. He always sees greater for you. Why? Because He is the immeasurable God. He is the limitless God. Um, uh, this is a quote from uh, Paul O'Neill. He says, Fear is imagining your future without God in it. Faith is imagining your future with God in it. It, it, it really hit me because God is with me and God has given me sight to see and therefore he provides. He's all I need. God is all I need. So now I fear the future because I don't actually see him in there. I don't see God in my future, but he is in my future. You know, so faith, in, what does faith do? Faith arises hope. It lifts hope up. What is hope? Hope is a preferred feature of God is saying over your life. You know, so this was such a huge, um, a huge moment for me to realize when we stepped into what God was saying for our boys. By faith, then he could provide. Because God wants to provide for you. That's why he gives you sight to see. Um, I, I want us to read the scripture in Ephesians 1, 7 to 9. It really rocked my world. It, it rocked my world. It says, it says, I pray that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches, the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him. Oh, to know him through your deepening intimacy with Him. Deepening intimacy with Him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate your eyes of your imagination. You know, when we see this, are we constantly limited by our perception of our past 
and we allow the past to determine what we see. God says here, I pray that the light of God will illuminate your eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full, listen, until you experience the full revelation of the hope, the hope, the hope, Hassan, which he is calling you. That is the wealth. Oh, provision. The wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us. Sorry, guys. This is, this is, guys, this is seriously exciting. Here it is. Here it is. You know, um, Hassan, the Hassan. The Hassah of God gives you wisdom and revelation, you know. And when we receive wisdom from God, I always think wisdom. It's part of the provision, you know, when you're seeing this. Part of the provision of God is the wisdom. What does wisdom do? Wisdom is truth. It's like almost governance. It's governance. It's authority. It allows you to stand on firm foundation. I'm thinking of King Saul. Um... Uh, King Solomon, sorry, King Solomon, when he asked God for vision, what happened after that? He governed his land well. It was wealthy. There's something of understanding the spirit of wisdom. When you're working with the vision, the prophetic vision of God, it allows governance in your life to start taking place. It takes place. And I think it is just so beautiful to see that, to see... Um, I think that's when you will be able to, to see answers to, to problems that you're having with it. You know, uh, you'll, you'll be, be provided with sight and wisdom regarding the plans God has for your life. I think wisdom is so crucial. It's, uh, it's just so important for you to understand. Receiving the spirit of wisdom, what is it? It illuminates your eyes to know and to see that which the hope God has placed there for you. Um, and I just want to I, I just want to end off, and I think we need to realize with this vision that is the provision. There's a there, you know there's something about prayer that goes in there. We banked, we didn't even bank. I can't call it. We shelved the word of God over our kids. So they didn't benefit, neither did we. But when we started activating and saying, God. Let me just pray over that. It's not a need. I'm not begging God. I'm speaking it into being. I'm not asking for it. He's given it to me already. He's given me this vision. So now I start having conversation with him. What does that do? It annihilates fear. It puts fear to the side. And it stirs faith in my heart. I think what you need to do is to realize when this vision has come, there's, there's priorities that kick in. I think it's a massive resource for us. This is what you see. It's, it priorities kick in. You start making decisions, choices that will determine how you are going to go. Because why I am, pro I am uh, prioritizing God's kingdom future for me on earth. So the nature and the quality of my decisions is based on kingdom thoughts. Not my willful intellect, passions, my fleshly desires. Which kicks in. I think your yes and your no's become accurate because why you've kept this in place and your priorities then cause this protection that takes place. Ah, oh, you know, because as soon as I realize I'm moving in this direction, God is going to protect it because he protects your future. He has a great future for why will he go and destroy it? You, you know, um, does that mean I'm not going to have yeah, I'm not gonna maybe have tough times. Of course, if I look at if I look at Abraham, I look at Moses. It wasn't always easy, understand? But he kept it ahead of him. He kept it, and what God provides in that sense, and He provides in different ways. You know, through through your life and through other people. I also think with protection, protection, there is a peace that that we need to guard that takes us in a place of rest and not a chase a place of chasing, you know, chasing after this. There's a place of rest. Peace brings clarity constantly to your thoughts. It's entering that. You see, a mindset with this, realizing uh, there's provision, a mindset of lack, lack, destroys vision. 
it destroys vision. It's saying that God cannot provide for his thoughts. So we need to take good, because as soon as you start thinking, there, peace just goes out of the door. Um, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow. You can plan for tomorrow, but don't worry about tomorrow. Don't be anxious about that. And I think that's a crucial part of this. And so that's what I want to leave with you um, with this is the provision in vision. So, okay, God, um, I'm seeing something. I'm believing something. I'm confessing something. I'm discovering it's in me. I house God. And then to realize I need to move into this physically, actually acting, responding to that. And then it's by faith. There's this risk moment that you have to take. Say, God, this is where I trust you. I trust you. And as soon as I start operating there, that's when God said, okay, here we go. This is a fun time. So can I just pray for us? Um, as you pursue this by faith, with joy, these are joyful moments for you to discover. It's not fearful moments, it's joyful moments. And um, we know God has got a great future. We know that because you've seen it in your life already. And God's nudging us in this time to be more accurate. It's a time to be more accurate with what God is saying over our household of faith, over your family and over your life. Um, Let's just pray. Thank you, Lord. Um, what, a, what a pleasure and a privilege, Lord, to just, just become aware of you, Lord. Lord, you, you are just, I'm so overwhelmed that you are so constantly, acutely aware of our lives because you love our futures, Lord. You love your kingdom. You love us, your image in us, Lord. And thank you for that. Lord, thank you for making life possible um, on earth, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I want to pray and I want to speak, um, Lord, courage over us, bravery over us, Lord. Stepping out and say, thank you, Lord. This is what you've spoken, Lord. Um, I, I, I want to speak that over us today, Lord, that we will not let go of what God has said, because God is not letting go. But, Lord, that we will take actions of faith, Lord, into this, realizing that which you have shown us, Lord, that's where the provision comes from. And I thank you for this, Lord. May we walk by faith and not by sight, Lord. Um, I, I thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.